I wish you a warm welcome. <laughs> We're very happy to see you here. You introduce yourselves um, for a few minutes, and then we'll take part in uh, the question of discipleship and witness, uh, so social witness in uh, minority situations. And we'll um, take some time to uh, uh, understand three uh, different situations okay, so, uh, and uh, in a nutshell, um, uh, how the, context the churches in France, the, in the Italy Valdezian and Church in Switzerland is, well, Italy cope is a pretty much secularized uh, country. If you ask everyone, uh, they will say they are Many of them are Roman Catholic, but in reality, I would say that the situation is pretty much similar to the one we have heard about here in Germany. So less than half of the population is a member of Now I will start a, a, do a doctorate if you want to know everything about me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Michel Charbonnier. I am a pastor in the Valdensian Church in Italy, uh, which is a a small uh, church in Italy, a union between uh, the Reformed and the Methodist churches in Italy. And uh, I'm a parish pastor. I'm also, I was member of the Central Committee of WCC uh, from uh, 2017 to today. And uh, before being a pastor, I've been working uh, in uh, the ecum ecumenical movement, uh, in the ecumenical youth movement, because back in the time that was possible for me to be young. But yes, so I am a member of the board of direction in the Canton de Vaud, so in the, in the executive uh, part of the um, of the organization. I'm not a pastor; <laughs> I'm a lay, and uh, in charge of different aspects uh, like the. Um, uh, economical and uh, interreligious uh, stuff, and also about the uh, the um, transition of uh, the climate transition is part of, of my. And also, no, all today, I'm, um, we'll work on the uh, exchange with you about the diaconi. Okay. Thank you. Um, so each one of you uh, are even maybe involved or aware of various situations in. Uh, in diaconal work, social work, and um, you've accep accepted to speak about one situation, maybe two, if uh, time is enough, and to um, let us uh, understand the context in which uh, your uh, church is active in the social work. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, uh, the context of the, the Valdensian Church, is, well, Italy is a pretty much secularized uh, country. If you ask everyone, uh, they will say they are, m many of them are Roman Catholic, but in reality, I would say that the situation is pretty much similar to the one we have heard about here in Germany. So less than half of the population is a member of uh, a church or a religious uh, organization, family. Um, the same, the, the situation of, uh, of uh, Valdensian Church as a tiny minority uh, is, uh, let's say, two-sided because uh, we have uh, an area in the, in the so-called Valdensian Valleys where Valdensians were traditionally settled, that area, uh, sociologically speaking, is very similar to a Volkskirche. So uh, being Valdensian is about tradition, roots, uh, a church, uh, family ties, not so much about believing in Jesus Christ. You, so there you would have big congregations, but very much secularized and decreasing very quickly. In the rest of Italy, you have a different situation because you have very small parishes, congregation, uh, but usually quite active because 
uh, if you are a member of a congregation there, it means that you have chosen to be there. And therefore, there are these two situations. Our social work uh, is in that, in that context. And I will offer you one example, which is a sort of umbrella example, because our social work as a Valencian church is very much influenced, affected by what we call otto per mille. Mm? Uh, if you don't know what it is, otto per mille is a percentage, the 0.8% of income tax that Italian citizens can decide to allocate to a religious denomination or to the state. Only the religious confessions recognized by the Italian state through official agreements uh, are able to access those funds. At the moment they are 13, which is not much at all. It's a very long and painful uh, process and the Italian state is not happy to give access to more religious organizations, so it's very difficult. Each religious confession decides, establishes within the agreement with the state how they intend to use that money, those funds received. And here is where the social work of the Valencian Church comes into the picture because, um, let's say, there are some principles uh, that guide the Valencian Church in using that money, and the first one is that Valencian Church has chosen not to use the money to finance its own worship activities, its own ecclesiastical activities, but only the idea is this is not church's money, this is uh, citizens' money, therefore we have to give it back to the citizens. Uh, with the cultural, social uh, activities, projects in Italy and abroad. So this is how, uh, this is the main um, idea. So everyone basically can present every organization, not individuals, but every, any organization can uh, present projects and apply for funds. To give you an idea, uh, the 2021 figures said that the 3.1% of taxpayers chose to allocate the money to the Valencian Church. 3.1%, which is a very small percentage, but if we translate it, then it's approximately 42.6 million euros and uh, they were used to finance 2022 uh, a total of more than 1,100 projects in Italy and in the whole world so 42.6 million euros 3.1 percent correspond also to more than almost uh, 540,000 signatures, which is almost 30 times our whole membership, 30 times, which means that a lot of Italian people entrust our church. So to wrap it up, this is a marvelous opportunity, you can imagine, to witness to not only to the Italian society, but even way beyond the Italian society, a church, how to be a church for others, mm. how not to do your own interest mm. in a country where churches tend to do their own interest, um, and also a different kind of relationship of church state between church and state. At the same time, it's also a big challenge because it's something that exposes clearly our weakness as a church. Be an enormous, a giant 
social uh, work through Otto per Mille and a tiny, 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 tiny church when it comes to parish work. And uh, so we're very good on social work, thanks to this system. We are less, way less good in speaking the good news, in connecting the social side and the uh, missional side, the evangelistic side of it. And this, the risk is that we end up being perceived more as a relief agency or a charitable organization than a church. So this is the challenge. Maybe just a quick question. Um, do you know why these people who decide to uh, give you that fund give the, uh, the funds to the Valdese churches and not to another church? Do you know why, uh, why they, these people decide to give to...? Well, there, there must be plenty of reasons. Many of them do not want to give it to the Roman Catholic Church, so they... Uh, but the question is why, why this then one? the Valdese? Yeah. So I would say the first reason is precisely because we don't use it for ourselves but for others and that means a lot to in a country where the majority church tends to collect a lot for themselves mm -hmm. so people are happy to to give it to a church that doesn't use it but give it back somehow and the second is transparency because it's very difficult to well, in the case of the Roman Catholic Church, it's nearly impossible to, to see where... You can imagine our 3.1% is 42 million euros. So you can imagine how much gets the Roman Catholic Church. And, but it's very difficult to, to, to know where the money is going. In our case, if you go to our website, you can see where every cent goes. And this is something which is very much appreciated by the population. So this gives us maybe uh, some clue about um, uh, witness by reputation. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Claire, did you find your... Uh, <laughs> Bachira? Okay. Thank you to introduce um, the, the context of the French EPDF, French Church and the social work. So um, our church represents 0.4% uh, uh, of the French population, so very small. And uh, we are not present only in the south, with, which is uh, historically the Protestant part of France, but almost everywhere in France, but with some parishes being as big as uh, uh, 100 kilometers from one part to, to, to the other part of the, of the parish. And, um, uh, when a church is a, a minority such as us, um, you, you can't serve everybody, uh, nor everywhere, and uh, we had to, to, to choose, uh, trying to choose wisely, um, where to, to, to act, and also we had to rely on others. And in France, the public services are strong, uh, uh, you have lots of... Um, non-denominational and uh, even not neutral associations uh, which do a, a great job especially for the the social um, uh, what we would name the diaconal work um, uh, you have NGOs and so on so uh, we have chosen to do some uh, things that were specific to to help us to have some visibility it was not the main idea uh, in creating those, uh, those uh, projects, but um, um, we don't do it for visibility, but uh, if we do it as a church, then we have to do uh, something very specific because we don't have lots of means. Um, if it's not specific, then we just call our parishioners to, to engage uh, or to commit to other uh, associations or NGOs. Um, uh, I would present two 
projects, very different ones. Uh, the first is um, a social organization which was created uh, in the 19th century. It was founded in uh, 18, 1848 uh, by the pastor John Bost. Um, uh, he decided to care, take care of the disabled and rejected people. Um, to show God's grace, God's love to all people, uh, whatever uh, their capacity or abilities. And uh, his motto was, those who are worthy of, um, I'll welcome them in the master's name without wall nor fences, and I will put flowers on their path. And today this foundation has grown up uh, in a huge way, it takes care of more than um, 1,800 uh, disabled people with different uh, dis disabilities uh, in several parts in France, uh, especially in La Force, the historic place uh, near Bergerac. And uh, even if the state pays for most of the daily costs, this foundation is very well known uh, because it receives a donation from Protestant people that allows it to be very innovative, uh, innovative developing some example, for example, um, specific wheelchairs which allow uh, the most disabled to experiment, experiment the standing position because most of the time they lay on their bed or on specific uh, wheelchairs but they they try to develop systems for them to have um, to experiment the direct face-to-face -face contact uh, and not only uh, lay on on a bed um, they also uh, have created cards to help non-speaking people to express their need or music instruments that even the paralyzed can play. And uh, the John Bust Foundation is very well known for the quality of its work and uh, it's in, in inspirational uh, to others uh, with those uh, in, in innovative perspectives. Uh, the, the work, this work is kind of a non-verbal way to incarnate the unconditional grace. And um, the church can, can also choose to engage the local community, for example, to recreate connection between peoples uh, in their area, especially when you don't have that much connection with people because there isn't um, a lot of, um, of uh, so civil society in some places, in, uh, especially in the, the new um, um, let's say the, 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 the cities which were built uh, um, in the in the, uh, 17, uh, the, the, the 20th century um, or in places where people um, uh, prefer to have their home uh, own home but then you don't uh, you don't find uh, places for them to, to meet. And uh, for example, in Lourmarin, it's in the south of France, the parish has developed a program to contribute to the culture in its area and to create links to people. Um, concerts, theater, exhibition to make known the Valdesian history of this uh, area. And also spiritual walks, uh, breakfast with the Bible sharing and so on, and trying to be uh, very open to the, the neighboring society so people can feel free to to be in contact with the church uh, without having to to do this difficult step to uh, come directly to a Sunday worship and they also plan to develop the work with local cultural and social association to go on serving the, the community and um, just a, a last point uh, in the north of Marseille you also have uh, in the poorest suburb of Marseille uh, where there are very few public squares and uh, uh, even very few vegetation, uh, the parish has opened up its garden to um, allow anyone who wants to come and garden with them to, to be able to do so. And harvests are shared with inhabitants and also with the local uh, food bank. Okay, so you have already answered to um, something we heard. 
is about connection between the the social church and the worshiping church. So what I understand is in some places some parishes are able to connect their social involvement and the worshiping involvement but that's in in a in some local way yeah it's very difficult in france because we have had this laicite uh, law which was supposed to be a freedom for the the, the, the churches and the believers and a neutrality of the state but which has uh, been understood in the last uh, few decades as more a way to uh, reduce the uh, the public the presence of the churches in the public sphere and uh, uh, making um, the the religious a private issue uh, and this also creates a mi mindset in most of uh, our parishioners as if you do uh, social work, you don't have to speak about your faith and uh, if you are, uh, uh, you have to separate uh, those two. But um, if it's not, um, if, if you work with vulnerable people, I can understand that you prevent yourself from creating things that could be understood as conditions to benefit uh, from the, the social work, uh, but um, we the, the individuality and loneliness in France is growing. Um, so we have now realized that it was also something we had to do as a church to create more links and connection um, in the very city in, in which we are part of. Thank you. We're coming back on these topics uh, later. Um, Emmanuel, uh, another context once more. Um, it's about uh, state church, yeah. which evolves and is starting to change. Yes, in the Canton de Vaud in Switzerland, we have a very specific situation because we are a church of, from the state. We are subsidized by the, by the, the state, like the, the Catholic people. Um, so about the diaconia means the social work uh, as a church uh, that we take care about people in a fragile situation. Uh, so we have, uh, it's part of the constitution of the Canton de Vaud. Uh, the last one was in 2005, is that correct? Something, something like that. Uh, because it's mentioned in the article of, this, of the, con on the constitution, the state takes into account the spiritual dimension of the human person and also the evangelical uh, Reformed Church and the Catholic Church are recognized as institution of public law. It's really mentioned in the, con in the Constitution. Sorry? The Jews also. And the Jews also, yes. Uh, no, they are um, Jews, they are um, from public... Um, um, not, uh, they don't have the same status. Okay. Yeah, they they have don't a, have exactly the same uh, status. It's different, but, but it's very close. Some kind of so we have a particular mission uh, linked with the Catholic people and we are, we, are man, we are managed, I would say, we are framed by the state uh, in the specific uh, priorities for this uh, diacona, which is the, the street, how to be with the people in the precarious uh, and dependent situation in the street, migrants and the refugees the, in the prison, the jails, the minors in care, uh, and the world of work of these people who have the difficulties to find, find a job, and also the health, the hospital and the retirement home, and also the emergency support. So uh, this is, uh, I think, one layer which is very important, very level of this um, uh, common commitment with the Catholic. And uh, for instance, we have uh, 30 FTE, which is a full-time um, equivalent uh, employees. We have 30 of, of people from the Reform, Reform Church, and they are uh, 30 people from the Catholic. So it's really balanced. And we also we have another level, which is more uh, regional. Uh, can we can deal with it directly? It's uh, called uh, the Presence and Solidarity Council. Each region have its own ministry in charge of that, which is out of this convention with the Catholics. But seven, seven, seventy-five percent of the resources on, on diaconi is on the common job with the, with the with the Catholic, and uh, twenty-five percent is from this. Um, presence and solidarity. There is an example that come up quite uh, often this time is about with the uh, contact with the, um, the agricultural world, these people from the agriculture, which has a, we have a big uh, 
troubles in this uh, area because we have a lot of suicides from these people. And uh, there's a big uh, job from this um, uh, chaplaincies and the aumônier, we said, that comes to the to these people to, to take care of them, to discuss with them. Uh, it's an important uh, topic today. So, um, what else? I think, uh, yeah, we are very framed from the from the from the state. A very so it's good because we have some resources, but at the other end, perhaps we lack some uh, flexibility, sometimes agility to manage in a specific, uh, I would say, urgent situation because we have to take care about this convention with the state. Okay, again, maybe the same question. What, how would you describe the relation between the serving parts of the church and the worshipping part of the church? It's not so easy because um, there are, we have fewer pastors. We have less and less pastors now. That's, that's the life. And uh, to full, especially to fulfill these functions. Also, we have the deacons and the, the diac in, in our canton are very focused on the parishes. Okay, we have a new kind of people now that comes, which are called the church animators. It's very new, quite new. It's quite recent, and uh, we expect these people to be involved in that. But it's a good question because we we don't have it's important that uh, in Switzerland or in Canton Vaud. It's important that uh, we don't we address these people without distinction of their religion convictions. Mm -hmm. So every um, chaplain, when they come to an hospital, they don't have to say, oh, "I'm Protestant." I know we 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 have to deal with the, the conviction of the person. Depends if it's a Muslim or Catholic, whatever. So it's um, sometimes difficult. Your question is good, but <laughs> it's, it's an issue. Okay, maybe we have a, a second round <laughs> or a third um, about one question emerging from uh, your talks um, is what kind of benefits can be uh, for your different churches from the social engagement and these benefits can be dire direct or uh, non-direct benefits how do you see do, does the, the social in, um, involvement uh, change maybe the way the, the the church considers herself or the way the theology is 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 brought or is reflected or the way people act or the way people feel in their minority situation how could you um, say a few things about uh, the ben these kind of benefits As I, Emmanuel, yeah. as I said, when a, a, chap a chaplain comes to uh, an hospital or whatever, he, don't have to, uh, he has to deal with uh, no distinction from their religious convictions. But the door opens very, I would say, um, easily when they touch the, the spiritual dimension, which is very different from the people from the social, ne social uh, work. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the, the, op the open door is very often on, on the spiritual dimension, but without being... Um, uh, um, uh, um, when, without knowing that people yeah. are Protestants. Yeah, yeah. And is there any benefit for not only the social worker himself, but for the church? How of thi this kind of. Uh <laughs> Quite a tough I question, I know. <laughs> I think that the, the, all the, the chaplain, I think they, they were very open-minded people and they, they, they have, a, okay, they, they, people kn knows that they, they come from the Protestant church, but they, it's not the first thing that they put into, uh, into the, the discussion and I think it makes sense, it, it, they find out open people. And I think it's good. Uh, it's a good, uh, um, good vision of the, of the church with, with open people. This is my, my perception. Social. Um, involvement seen as opening minds. Yeah, opening okay, minds, yes. yeah. Okay, thank you. Who else wants to say something? Um, I think that the, the first thing is um, uh, diaconia is a full dimension of church. And with this uh, understanding of laicity and the separation between the states and the churches, um, uh, it's useful for us to remind always our parishioners that the diaconia is full, uh, fully part 
of the of the church. Mm -hmm. It's a full dimension of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they are il involved uh, with their acting uh, through their face, and especially when it's uh, in the, the most local project, uh, like the, the last one I, I presented, um, they realize that uh, they are here to, to serve the, the, the whole community and not only uh, them, uh, their church. Um, the other thing is about uh, visibility, because when you're a minority, you always wonder how to attract new people. And uh, uh, then it helps us to have a good image in the public sphere, to, to, to get known and to have a, a, a good image. So it's also a benefit, uh, a co communication benefit, uh, let's say. And I think it's also a way to be more faithful to Jesus Christ, uh, simply. So it's, yeah, it's hard, but it's very important too. Uh, about people coming to church, uh, with that reputation, maybe you two could could say something about that. Do you observe that some people come to church because that reputation or that good practice of using money or of, of being involved in the local social uh, work? Yeah, we clearly have this. Yeah. Uh, we have pe um, people who who are Christians or who who are attracted by Christianity, but who fear. Um, about the the kind of social control you can find in the evangelic churches, and uh, we are also afraid of becoming Catholic because in France, Catholic uh, church is becoming more and more conservative, and uh, they, if they want a more liberal or more free uh, style of Christianism, uh, they they come to our church. Okay. Yes, thank you, M Michel. Okay. Um, so, about uh, the benefits first. Uh, yes, I would say that uh, social, well, diaconia mm -hmm. is a fundamental part of of uh, being Christian because it it changes you it affects you it it molds your your faith mm -hmm. and your spirituality it mm -hmm. let's say it makes you grow spiritually mm -hmm. okay so uh diaconia is not about helping others it's helping it's about helping yourself becoming a better christian Okay, the thing is, uh, in this situation I have described, um, where we have uh, the diaconia of the local parishes uh, and the big uh, diaconical organization, institutions, uh, led by professionals uh, and having mm, way more resources, men power and, and women power and financial power, we end up in this situation, we have two speeds in the church and it becomes very difficult because you have the parishes where there is that idea of uh, becoming a better Christian, who struggle very much in bringing forward their diaconical work. Whereas you have the very fast car going uh, very fast and, uh, and being very powerful and effective, but where the spiritual aspect is not very present because we say, okay, it doesn't matter if you are uh, reformed or uh, Muslim or uh, Catholic, it matters that you have to do things professionally and properly and so on and so forth. So the, there is this separation happening more and more. Uh, yeah. 
about people coming to church, this for us is a bit of a taboo. So if we had uh, someone coming to church, we would almost end up apologizing for that. I don't know where this comes from. I don't know uh, if it dates back to when we were living in a ghetto and we were having people coming uh, to us trying to convert us and therefore we must have uh, psychologically swore never to convert anyone. I don't know if it, that's... But the, the, the reality is we have an unresolved problem with uh, evangelization in, in my context. We are lacking totally a reflection on that. Therefore, our social work is only and exclusively uh, directed outward. Mm -hmm. There is the idea of uh, having being it being a door mm -hmm. to the church mm -hmm. is almost seen very negatively. Okay, and um, and therefore, yeah, I really think we we need we need a reflection on that because um, we all we say is I do what I do because I believe in what I do and I believe that's my task as Christian. If anyone wants to know more, they come to me and they ask. That's as far as our evangelization program goes which is not very much mm -hmm. and I also understand that the the worshiping parts of the church and the social parts of the church have very few places to meet to know to get to know each other to work together to talk to to to, to get in in, in, uh, in some some work for building together some some face of the church public face of the church yeah Okay, thank you. Do you want to add something? Yeah. yeah um, we, we used to be, what my, my former president uh, said, uh, a little folk. We, we used to be a kind of a tribe, the Protestant tribe of France, mm -hmm. and uh, we were um, reproducing ourselves uh, by uh, family passing, passing on. And uh, this changed uh, from the, the 60s or the 70s where more uh, Protestants got married with people from other religions and now we have 90% uh, of our members who marry outside the community. So um, the family passing on is really at stake in our church. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we had to, if we want to survive, uh, we need to find other ways. But mm -hmm. our goal is not to survive as a church. Our goal is uh, to survive at, as witnesses of um, of Christ, and um, in the in the at the beginning of the the 21st century, uh, we decided to merge between the Lutheran and the Reformed, and it was not mainly. It was also a question of means, but it was not mainly a question of means. It was really a question of how to uh, become better witnesses. And our motto from the merger is uh, becoming a church of witnesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what we have realized is in the classical um, diaconal work for the most, uh, the poorest, the most vulnerable and so on, uh, you have to be very professional mm -hmm. in France. But uh, one of the main needs today is uh, community relations because people live more and more in isolation from one another and as we have this uh, huge uh, state solidarity we don't need uh, those uh, relations for solidarity so we have to be voluntary, uh, voluntarily um, creating or recreating them and uh, now we have we have understood that uh, it can be our mission from the next few years or decade to, uh, in each uh, uh, in our local context, to recreate those links and to really uh, be part of the of the social society 
uh, the, 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 the civic uh, society in our places because it's also a way of witnessing of Christ and if we are more known that way then we can address um, uh, people can uh, come to us when they have spiritual needs, where they have, they have a crisis in life and they, they want to find meaning and we can accompany them and help them finding the kind of answers we've, we found it, uh, we, 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 we find uh, ourselves. Thank you very much. This, this leads us to a, a question about how your church embraces the, the actual and the future questions about being in church, about being able to, to serve the society and not only the church, as you said, and how, how to, to think about these topics for the future. The, the, the world changes very fast. Um, the, the churches are strong in some ways and very fragile in other ways. And how can the, the, the social uh, witness come to uh, to be to be uh, to be uh, to be bared to be to be uh, accompanied uh, accompanied by the, by the church for the future so this is already a, 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 some some kind of question or, or some kind of answer to to that uh, building relations building networks that's a way to to answer do, do you see other ways to answer to the, the, the challenges, the future challenges. How, how do you do your, your churches think about these questions? Yeah, well, I, I from what I've said, I, I think it's clear f that for me that uh, we need some uh, internal dialogues in my church we need to have a, a good discussion uh, on how to put the witnessing part in our social work otherwise we are just another uh, relief agency mm. Uh, and this is one thing. So we, we need to, to find uh, a common speed uh, between the, the small chariot, which is the, the local congregations, and the uh, fast car, which is our diaconical work. Uh, and we need also to uh, find new languages. Because the, the main problem is that for, for, our, for our local congregations is that uh, we are speaking a language that, that people do not understand anymore. So even if uh, we were able to attract people at, at our doorstep, then they, they wouldn't enter because they wouldn't really understand what we are, what we are saying. And the thing is, it's not, an, not only a problem of uh, being understandable to the newcomers anymore, it's a matter of being understandable to ourselves, to our parishioners, to our young people who do not come to church anymore because what the, the way we are saying things uh, does not really make sense to them anymore. So we really have uh, a homework to do in finding, finding uh, new languages to express our, our faith in the society and express our faith to the society. Uh, Emmanuel, maybe you would like to add a few things about the, the thing, the, the yes. way the, the French-speaking uh, church uh, reflects uh, these topics. I'm in contact with uh, some pastors who are very creative, and um, especially um, I think about pastor in Geneva, but it's close to, to us, and there's also in, in Vaux. We are is um, he provides some um, 
uh, workshops for uh, people who are in uh, because the, the spiritual need is here. There's a strong spiritual needs in our society, and they they address the they address the people that they cannot go anymore to the church on Sunday, but they have a strong spiritual needs even on the on the Christian uh, roots. And uh, I know so many pastors that they, they, they change the language, not the, the, the roots, not the, the deep le uh, message, but the, 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 the way to, to, to propose. And I think it works very well. So I'm very confident with this kind of, well, how can you adapt the language? How can you adapt the, the ways to, to, to connect with people? Uh, because there's a deep, there's a very deep uh, spiritual need. Thank you very much. I would like, in, a, in the last part of the, this meeting, uh, to give you the opportunity to ask some questions to our speakers. Does anyone want to ask something? Say Hello. Something? Uh, thank you for the presentation. I came a bit late, but uh, I'm really actually listening to you. And uh, I'm basically from India. Uh, and uh, when the topic of minority comes, uh, uh, the issue of persecution also involves, get involved in many ways. Uh, and then, uh, like, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, you all are from a places where there is no minority as such, uh, as maybe from my uh, part of the world. So how can we, uh, being a minor, minor, total minority of 2.4 in India with the uh, population of 1.4 billion, uh, how we can stand for such a thing where we are not even having a proper right to have l our lives and we are uh, being persecuted, so how we can be uh, like uh, do all these things or say some things or come as a dialogue where we, our voices are not even heard by anybody. Thank you. We have the chance to uh, be in uh, pluralistic societies, but it, it took 500 years to come to this. Uh, my church was uh, prosecuted in the uh, 19th, uh, 18th century. Uh, we were uh, forbidden for one century uh, to be Protestant in, in France, and it was the same for the Valdezian. Uh, and at that time, it was just not possible to have public witness. We were just trying to, to survive. And uh, with uh, people coming to preach from abroad, and uh, with uh, people hiding um, and, and things like that. So, but uh, what we realized is that just after the prosecution, uh, when we were allowed to have uh, uh, to, to be in the society uh, again, uh, it was a, a moment of huge explosion in the, the 19th century in France of uh, diaconal works. That, that the, the first I presented uh, was founded in, in uh, 1848. So, um, and, and uh, uh, we had strong engagement in the society at, at that time, just because we were so happy to be free and to then be able to witness to the, to, to the gospel and to share it and to show God's love to everyone. So that's maybe another key. I mean, the, the social and the diaconal work can be a way to tell the society that the religion, the church, is not a threat to the society, but it's a contribution. It's serving the society, yeah. but it takes a very long time to, to, to do so. And um, also, I, I may have add, add, uh, I may uh, add now um, something from what my colleagues just said about the the presence in the in the city in in France. Uh, France used to be Catholic, and now it's non mainly non-believers. Uh, but the problem is that conservative people used to rely on Catholic faith, but now they don't find the, the spring of uh, the, the, the values which they want to uh, fight for. 
and which uh, they want to, to defend in the society. Uh, so they become very conservative because they don't want influences from abroad, because their own values are becoming weak, because they can't find the spring, because they, they have forgotten that the spring of their uh, very democratic values was from the gospel. And uh, what is important also to have a visibility of our church in the society is also to have a more positive contribution uh, to uh, reminding people that the, the French style of democracy was irrigated by this spring of the gospel. Thank you very much. Is anyone else wanting to take, uh, to say something? Yeah, please. Thank you. That's okay, it's working. Th thank you for the presentation. Um, I'll I would like to pick your brains. I come from South Africa, where it is the majority ministering to the majority. But the dynamic is that because we are coming from extreme oppression and which is intertwined with, with poverty and, uh, you know, having been marginalized for centuries, which, which of the criteria that you've used that we can learn from to anchor the social programs of Diakona, which can help people within the church to experience the love of Christ and draw those who are unchurched to come into the church? Which one? So that we, we are also able to think in a different way, because that is the challenge in South Africa. Thank you very much. Do you want to add something or to, to say something? Yeah. So I am, I don't think I'm going to be able to answer, but what I can share is uh, we are coming from a situation of uh, uh, persecution and uh, a situation with no rights and as I said already on uh, on another level on another topic the, the what where we come from our history uh, shapes us uh, and I, I think it's the same about w the fact that we put that in our social work. Uh, we, um, we do not uh, pretend that our history didn't happen. We do not, on the other hand, uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, we do not. We do not uh, use our history as a, a, a oppressed minority to to slap the oppressing majority, because that would be that would be a problem as well. We try to channel our wounds and our experiences and our collective tradition into the way we, we, we do social work as well. Therefore, our social work is very much focused towards the, the least, the last and the lost, to quote Yesterday's, yesterday's plenary uh, because that's what we were uh, until <laughs> until yesterday mm -hmm. um, so yeah um, this is I mean this is these are the, the principles that that guide that guide us uh, the attention to the voiceless, to the most marginalized, 
to the to the oppressed today's oppressed in our context of course uh, but these sh these shape very much our social action because that is part of what we what we were and what we are okay thank you yeah you clear I, I also think that the, the theme of reconciliation is very important for example uh, in France the there there was so much hope when the Catholic entered the ecumenical uh, movement in the 60s because it it recreated the possibility to discuss with them and to uh, share memories and uh, and uh, to 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 now we used to be more Catholic or more Protestant than Christian when we were face to face. Now we are Christian together and then we have a Catholic or a Protestant style, which is a very different mindset. And this was thanks to the, the um, theological dialogues, ecumenical dialogues, which took place from the 60s. And um, I, I think I, I, I don't know much about the, the South uh, African society, uh, but what I, I know is that um, the, this society is still very divided because of the injustice, I can understand, but also uh, uh, be, uh, between the ethnies with prejudice from one another. And I think that uh, just to have a, a wo working uh, around the prejudices one have uh, against uh, one another and uh, uh, trying to, to be multi multicultural communities uh, are a real witness in the South African society. Thank you. Maybe we have a few minutes for one last question or one last um, witness. Hi, my name is Catherine and um, I work with the Freedom of Religion or Belief Learning Platform. And I, I confess that I only um, caught the second half of, uh, of this uh, workshop when I saw it was taking place here on a very uh, I interesting topic about uh, churches in a minority situation and I've been involved in the ecumenical dialogue on freedom of religion or belief here where many experiences of sh churches in minority situations have been um, held and I, I was thinking that um, uh, there's one thing you've been talking about is um, the social witness that's possible after you've been recognized as a legitimate actor in society, once persecution is finished, as it were, or has legally come to an end, even if discrimination continued. I'm thinking there's many churches who are, have been living in the very difficult situation for very, very long periods of time around the world. And um, um, how do we work with empowerment uh, to be a to be disciples and social witnesses in situations of real extreme uh, pressure and risk and I, I, I just um, wanted to share with you a little bit about um, how we're trying to support that from the freedom of religion or belief learning platform because um, we provide um, we provide a range of courses and learning resources to help faith communities and civil society learn about and promote freedom of religion or belief for all so that we can get out of this situation of pressure for being a minority. Um, and I just wanted to share with you one um, publication we have which enables any competent facilitator to lead nine, a series of nine workshops to raise awareness and mobilize communities and it's designed for across faith groups and we've tested it in Tanzania with Muslims and Christians, in Jordan with Muslims, Christians, Baha'i and Zoroastrians, in India with Hindus and Muslims and atheists, in Nigeria with Christians and Muslims and it's worked really well as a at the community level changing um, attitude. So I just wanted to share, share it with you um, but also to ask if you had uh, from if you have from what you know of the period where where the church was banned 
and wasn't allowed, what kind of, whether there was, what were the strategies for change at that point in your history? So that, that could be a very complicated thing because it, it, it's related to history, to politics and uh, to many topics, but maybe <laughs> some short things about um, that. Actually, in France, um, when we started being prosecuted, the priests were super, uh, supporting uh, prosecution and they were very happy to welcome the forced convert in their churches. But this um, created um, a problem for the real Catholic believers because they realized that their priests were, weren't relying on the face, the real face, of people who were there, but only on, on the attendance of, and of the, the people being officially part of that church. And that was the starting of the process of secularization in France. And the, the, the society was very uh, secularized from the 18th century because of that. And that's what uh, created uh, the, the, the law on uh, freedom of religion in uh, uh, 1787, uh, so just two years before the, the Revo French Revolution. And um, um, actually, um, relying on, on violence uh, to convert other people, um, it creates a, a, a feeling of distrust uh, because uh, then what is important is uh, only belonging and not believing. And uh, for, for the, fr uh, the, the Christian tradition, believing is very important. So it, it can be different. In a, in a, I, I don't know enough the other religions to know if uh, believing is important or not. Uh, but if you prefer to have people belonging uh, but without believing, uh, then it, it causes a problem of credibility. Of, of your of your own um, religion, mm -hmm. so it can be also a witness to the majority that mm -hmm. uh, they, they should not <laughs> do so mm -hmm. because uh, they, they, it's less their credibility. Okay, thank you very much to all of you. I, I suggest we applaud them. <laughs> thank you for attending this moment and uh, have a nice conference. <laughs>